Today, I'm really excited to share with you the top 10 movies that have not only influenced me, but have been the spiritual landmarks of my life. These films, some understood only in hindsight, have been like beacons illuminating my path for over 35 years. Join me as we delve into these cinematic journeys that hold profound lessons for the soul, lessons that you can implement in your own life. So I'll pause while you get the popcorn. Okay, ready to get started? We're gonna count these down from number 10 to number one. And then I will have a bonus honorable mention at the very end. So number 10 is the movie Before I Fall that was released in 2017 and it was adapted from a book with the same name. In this movie, the main character, Samantha, is a rotten teenager with rotten friends and she isn't very nice. And they show her day in the life And at the end, her and her friends die in this horrific car wreck. She wakes up the next morning and gets up thinking that this has just been some terrible nightmare, but then experiences deja vu throughout the entire day. And she realizes that she's stuck in a loop. I get it. It sounds a little bit like the premise of the movie Groundhog Day, but this one has a little bit of a different twist to it. She finally realizes after multiple iterations of living the same day over and over that the only way she's going to get out is to create these amazing relationships. And she spends the entire day trying to revamp her life because she sees everything from a different perspective. What I love about this movie is it's very similar to what I hear when I interview people who have had near-death experiences, and that is that they have a life review. And in the life review, they judge themselves for how they interacted with the different people in their lives. I think this movie is a really great example of the ripple effect. And I've interviewed and listened to a lot of life review stories from near-death experiencers. And the common theme seems to be that what we do to others comes back to us and really affects us. We think we're doing something to somebody else, but really what we do to somebody else, we actually do to ourselves. And this premise has greatly affected my life and how I live my life because I understand the importance of showing up in love every day. I think this is a good movie to watch. And if you want a great example, I'm going to link up here, uh, story of an NDE by Jeremiah Pospisil who had a life review and you can see an example of what that is. You can find this on Amazon Prime for free. It is not available right now on now. Okay, number nine movie is The Last Mimsy, which was released in 2007. This has an all-star cast starring Timothy Hutton, Katherine Hahn, Rain Wilson, Michael Clark, and Jolie Richardson. This is a sci-fi film where there's a catastrophic disaster in the future that can only be averted by sending this rabbit into the past that they hope will be able to capture some genetic material that will save humanity. These kids discover the toys from the future and they begin to work with them and develop these crazy supernatural abilities like psychic abilities and connecting to nature and being able to hear somebody telepathically. It's a really cool movie. And the reason that this one captures my attention and is number nine on the list is because I have experienced these profound out-of-body states using a substance called 5-MeO-DMT. It's a animal-based medicine and it allows me to have an experience that leaves the body where I become my higher self, my soul. I've done this 18 times to date, and when it happens, the majority of the time, as I'm inhaling this medicine and I begin to lay down, I start to see this grid pattern that the walls and this world around me are. It's like we're living in this matrix. It's like we're living in a simulation, and the walls become translucent and grid-like, and iridescent. And there's a scene in the movie where they're building this bridge to send the rabbit back to the future. And it creates this giant circular portal that I've affectionately now called 
that effect when I go on these journeys, the last Mimsy effect. So it's a great movie to check out and it is available for free on Amazon Prime and not currently available on Netflix. Okay, number eight is The Map of Tiny Perfect Things, released in 2021. It's a romantic comedy. It probably has a bunch of actors in it that you're not familiar with. But the reason I really like this movie is it has a similarity to Groundhog Day with a little bit different twist. It's about this boy who is living this life over and over again, and he is going around doing these great deeds and trying to help people in their own lives. And then one day while he's waiting at the pool to help this girl to keep her from falling in the pool, he notices a random other girl walk through the scene and she shouldn't be there. And he realizes that there's somebody else who is also stuck in the same time loop with him. And together they show each other all of these beautiful, perfect events that happen throughout the day. And they decide that if they map them, this might be the way that they can escape their situation. The reason I love this movie so much is because they notice that everybody that is living their life is pretty much living it in a dream. They're completely unaware. And they are also completely unaware of these beautiful, tiny, perfect moments that are happening around them. So I think it's a great reminder for us to pay attention to these tiny perfect moments. They're not insignificant. They really can affect us in very profound ways. So you can find this movie on Amazon Prime for free and it's not currently available on Netflix. Okay, movie number seven is Interstellar. This is actually the highest grossing movie. It brought in $700 million. I'm gonna warn you, it's almost a three hour movie, but I think this one is really worth your investment in time. It has a total star studded cast, including Matthew McConaughey, Jessica Chastin, Anne Hathaway, Matt Damon, Michael Caine, John Lithgow, and Ellen Bernstein. The premise of this movie is that they are living in this dystopia future where the entire world is in famine and a group of astronauts go searching and find a wormhole looking for a new home for mankind. Okay, so there are two parts of this movie that really struck me on a spiritual level. This movie is really an example of time and how time works. So if you followed anything with quantum physics or followed Albert Einstein, he says that time is an illusion, that everything is actually happening at once. And the great example in this movie is that this ship finds this water planet and they have to send a satellite ship down to go And they have to do it really fast because time happens differently on this planet than it does where the man is staying behind in the spacecraft. And unfortunately, they get stuck in this horrific tidal wave and it takes them hours to get back. And when they return to the ship, the poor man left behind has waited for 23 years and to them only hours have passed. So he's 23 years older and they're the same age. And I think that this is a really great example of how things work with time on the other side. I really believe that while we're here on this earth, we're experiencing our life in this linear fashion. You know, we're here for 50 years, 70 years, 100 years. But when people die and go to the other side, to them, time doesn't exist the way that it does for us. And for them, they feel like they saw you last week and they're going to see you again next week, where for us, it feels like we're here without them for 20, 30, 50 years. So time is definitely an illusion. And I love the example that this illuminates. The other scene is also really spectacular, where Matthew McConaughey, who plays the character Coop, actually falls through the event horizon near a black hole. And he falls into this five-dimensional reality. And he can see that time is stacked on itself and he moves around these different barriers of time and he's able to go back and try to relate a message to his younger self from this perspective. And he realizes that all of these things that he thought were kind of a ghost, a warning, was actually his future self trying to warn him about what he didn't want him to do. I mean, it's a really, really cool concept. 
And it's actually overall a really phenomenal movie. So I highly recommend that you check this out. But it is by far the best example of time. And actually, there is a really cool companion book that you can get called The Science of Interstellar. It was written by a man named Kip Thorne, who is a theoretical physicist who won a Nobel laureate in physics in 2017. I actually ordered this book and I'm really excited to check it out. I didn't know about it until today. Okay, you can find this movie. It is unfortunately available for rent on Amazon Prime. So you're gonna have to shell out a little bit of cash if you wanna see this one. Okay, movie number six is Cloud Atlas, released in 2014 from the creators of The Matrix. And this was actually one of the highest grossing movies on my list. It grossed over $100 million, but it's going to be one of the most complex movies that I'm recommending here, and it is nearly three hours in length. And you're probably going to have to watch it more than once to really understand the full premise and grab this whole complicated situation that they're trying to impart to you, which is about how our lives work in the past, present, and future. That's it. The music from my dream. There are whole movements I wrote imagining us meeting again and again in different lives, in different ages. I can't explain it, but I knew when I opened that door, a powerful deja vu ran through my bones. As we have multiple lives where we entangle with multiple other souls and contract with them through these lifetimes where we are both the bad guy and the good guy, where we are both male and female, and where we take on all of these really complex roles with each other. This movie, I cannot recommend enough if you really want to understand the concept of how we have soul contracts and how we connect with other people and how we play these different roles with each other our lives are not our own we are bound to others past and present and by each crime and every kindness we birth our future a lot of the people that i interview who have near-death experiences talk about how one of the main purposes of coming to this earth is to have experiences and also to understand that what we do to others actually affects us and we try to come back and be better and more loving as we come into these different lifetimes. So this is a really fantastic movie. This is a star-studded cast featuring Tom Hanks, Haley Berry, Hugh Grant, Hugo Weaving, and Susan Sarandon. Like I said, you're going to have to watch this one to really understand the premise and how it works. It is available for rent on Amazon Prime. So again, you're going to have to shell a little bit of cash to see this one and it is not available on Netflix. Okay, movie number five is Groundhog Day. And you probably have seen this and I'm sure for, sh I'm, I'm positive you've at least heard of this movie. Groundhog Day was released in 1993. It's a rom-com with a star-studded cast. Again, it grossed over $100 million. And I love, love, love this movie for so many reasons. It's really profoundly affected me. I saw it at the movie theater back in 1993. I have even been to the town that they filmed this in, which was Woodstock, Illinois. And it is just such a great movie about how we navigate through our lives and the premise of acting in love and service versus being selfish. So it's about this man. His name is Phil. He's a reporter and he's sent to this little teeny tiny, tiny town called Puxatawney, Pennsylvania to film Groundhog Day, which is an event that happens every February 2nd where the groundhog comes out and if he sees his shadow, then he gets scared and we're not going to, we're going to have more winter. And if he doesn't see his shadow, then then we're going to have an early spring. So he spends this, this day and he's a jerk, you know, he's just not a nice person. And then he wakes up the next morning and it's the same day. And he decides to take advantage of this very quickly. And he sleeps with a bunch of different people. He robs a bank, he buys cars and he pretty much manipulates people. And then he realizes that this isn't very much fun. And he goes into this deep depression and funk and tries to kill himself multiple times, multiple ways. 
And then eventually he realizes he's not going to get out of the loop. So he might as well start living his life. And he has a crush on his producer played by Andy McDowell. And he tries to pursue her, but every day because he's doing this disingenuously winds up getting slapped in the face and winds up waking up in the bed again to Sonny and Cher singing, I got you, babe. So eventually he figures it out and he learns to play an instrument and he finds all of these places around town where he can be of service, where he can be helpful and he can better somebody else's life. And the reason I love this movie so much is that he wakes up from being a self-centered, selfish person to understanding the power of service. And where he wasn't able to get Andy McDowell's attention, where he isn't able to win her over, all of a sudden, everybody in the town is talking about him, talking about how great he is. And this is a concept that I think is so incredibly powerful, and I call it relevance. It's being relevant in your life as a position to empower you to have a greater life. And I'm actually going to post a video in a couple of weeks where I talk about this topic in a little bit more detail. But Groundhog Day is a delightful movie. I think I know every line in the movie and it is available for free on Amazon Prime and it is not currently available on Netflix. Movie number four is What Dreams May Come. This was released in 1994 and I remember seeing this movie a long time ago. But in 2012, I had an experience where I was listening to two different books on tape in the same week and both mediums recommended this movie and they said that this was the best example that they had ever seen of how the other side works with our thoughts and our ability to create these realities when we are on the other side. This again has a star-studded cast of characters. Robin Williams is in this movie, Cuba Gooding Jr., Annabella Sarosa, um, Max von Sydow, Rosalind Chow, and the premise is this is about a man and a woman who meet in this crazy vacation that they're both on in Switzerland. They fall in love and, and then eventually he, I'm going to spoiler alert this, he winds up dying in a car crash. And this is when the movie really begins. Has come for Chris Nielsen. You've died, Chris. What I love about this movie is it has a couple of scenes in it that are the best depiction that I've ever seen in any movie of how spirit communication works when somebody dies. They visualized this in a way that just made my hair stand on end when it happened. They still exist. And I really believe that this is how it works. Don't worry, baby. I'm not leaving you alone. I'm not going anywhere. That when we lose somebody that we love, our their spirit can very easily hear every single word, thought that we have towards them and that they always love us and they are around us all the time. It's just a really great example of that. But this movie goes way further than that because eventually the wife commits suicide because she's in such despair over the loss of her children and her husband. And when she does this, he tries to rescue her from a place that she has gone, which is a depiction of hell. It's a crazy depiction of hell. And this is not a hell where she was sent there because she committed suicide. It's a hell of her own making because she believes that she is just doomed 
and in a state of grief and despair. And Robin Williams have to, has to go and try and rescue her. So this movie has so many tenets. It has the spirit communication aspect. It has this concept that I have heard many near-death experiencers talk about when they go to a realm that is hellish. And a lot of times they come back and they realize that the reason they went to that hellish place is because their own thoughts and expectations put them there, that they don't really believe that there is a hell with a devil where we are sent as a form of punishment, but it's this place that we go to because of the belief systems that we carry from this earthly existence into the realm on the other side. So it's a great example also of spirit guides and how they work. And I highly, highly recommend this movie. It actually won an Academy Award that year for its stunning visual effects. So you can check that one out. It is the last movie on my list that you actually have to pay for on Amazon Prime as a rental, and it is not currently available on Netflix. Okay, we're getting down to the top three. Movie number three is The Matrix. This movie was released in 1999, and oh my God, if you haven't heard from it, you've probably been living under a rock. It is also one of the highest grossing movies on my list. It grossed $460 million to date, and it is a fantastic movie with a fantastic cast. It's starring Keanu Reeves, Carrie Ann Moss, Lawrence Fishburne, and Hugo Weaving. And Hugo Weaving, by the way, is one of the one of only two movies where he stars in two movies on this list. He was also in the movie Cloud Atlas. Have you heard spiritual people talking about this is a simulation? The Matrix is the best example that I can think of of we are living in this simulation. So in this movie, Keanu Reeves plays a character called Neo. He's a computer programmer. And the other side is trying to get his attention. They offer him a blue pill and a red pill. He takes the pill and all of a sudden he is out of this pretend existence where everybody's walking around in a dream state, living their earthly life. And he is now in the real system, which is a matrix that has been computer simulated and built. He's able to pick up all of these crazy abilities by putting these programs into his mind. And then they keep on going back into the fake world and they get chased by these agents. And he, Neo keeps on being told that he is the one that is going to save the earth and break everybody free and let them understand that they're in this simulation. So I won't spoil the whole movie in the very rare event that you haven't seen this one, but I love this movie for so many reasons that it is really talking about how the simulation that we are living in is the dream and what exists on the other side is the real. Many people that I have interviewed who have had near-death experiences talk about this, and I really believe that it's true. This is a movie that you will have to pay to rent, and it is on Amazon Prime, and it is not currently available on Netflix. Okay, we're getting down to the end. Movie number two is called Made in Heaven. It's an obscure film that was made back in 1987. I was a freshman in college when I saw this at the movie theater. This has held such a special place in my heart. I think I know every line in the movie by heart. I can't even count how many times I've seen this movie, but it's a romantic comedy and a little bit of a fantasy movie. And this also has a wonderful cast. Timothy Hutton is in this movie, as is Kelly McGillis. You might remember her. She was in Top Gun. Tom Petty, the rock star, is in this movie. Rick Ocasek, the lead singer of the band Cars, is in this movie, as is Neil Young. Alan Barkin, who starred in Risky Business. And Deborah Winger is in this movie. And I challenge you to find Deborah Winger in this movie because originally when this movie came out, they didn't even list her in the credits that she played this crazy part in this movie. So Timothy Hutton is the main star of the movie. He plays this guy who is living in the 1950s and dies while he's trying to rescue some kids from drowning. I'm not spoiling anything. That happens in like the first 10 minutes of the movie. In any case, he goes to this place, heaven, and he is met by one of his passed away aunts. Come to heaven. And he's living this existence in heaven where he can think and be somewhere. And he meets this beautiful woman, Kelly McGillis, who plays this woman named Annie. And she is a guide in heaven who has never been to earth. And she's just dying, pun intended, to go to earth. I'm going on earth. And they grant her the ability to go to earth, but not before the two of them fall in love. I'd like to marry you. 
According to heaven, we already are and get married in heaven so she's sent back to earth as a baby and he begs to be sent back to earth to find her he's given 30 years to try and find her and he's told that if he doesn't find her in these 30 years they'll both meet and marry other people they'll be miserable and if they don't find each other by the time they turn 30 they will never find each other so it's a really great movie i love this for an example of soulmates and connections one of the things I really believe about these soulmate connections is, first of all, we don't have just one. We have many, many soulmates that we can incarnate and have these experiences with. But we have soul contracts with the people that are the most important in our lives because without those experiences, we would not become and be able to complete these different experiences that we want to have while we're here on this earth. And so for you, if you have contracted to have a very special person come into your life, say, for example, to be your husband or to be your wife, to have children with, there is no way that you would not meet that person. Like if you stayed in the same place for your entire life, that person would walk through and walk in so that you could meet them. Like when you are destined to meet certain people to have experiences here, you're going to find them. But this is just a great example of how I feel heaven works and how we do have these circumstances and synchronicities so that we're able to find and connect the people that we are meant to be with. You can check this movie out on Amazon Prime for free. Okay, it's time. Are you excited? I'm excited. My movie number one is probably an obscure film that you have never heard of. It was released in 1991. I remember seeing this when I was in college at the movie theater, and the name of it is called Defending Your Life. It has some pretty high profile actors and actresses in this movie, you will find as the star Albert Brooks, who actually wrote this movie. He's a comedian, if you're not familiar with him. And he got Meryl Streep to act in this movie. And he actually wrote the part for her. And it also stars Rip Torn and Shirley MacLaine as herself. Guys, this has been my all-time favorite movie for decades, and it spoke to me on a level before I was ever on a spiritual journey. And now, with great hindsight, I understand why this movie was so important to me, because I believe that it depicts one of the greatest spiritual lessons that we come here to this earth to learn, and that is to overcome fear. Now, being from Earth as you are, and using as little of your brain as you do, your life has pretty much been devoted to dealing with fear. So the premise of this movie is that this guy, Albert Brooks, is playing this character named David Miller. He dies in the first five minutes of the movie and he goes to this place called Judgment City where he realizes that he is going to have to go on trial. On trial for being afraid. Well, first of all, I don't like to call it a trial. Second of all, yes. And defend his life and defend the fact that he overcame his fears while he was in this life. He unfortunately learns that from this perspective on Earth, his human brain was only using like three to five percent of it. One word, the point of this whole thing is to keep getting smarter, to, to keep growing. To use as much of your brain as possible. For example, I use 48% of my brain. Do you know how much you use? 47? <laughs> three. I'm sorry? Three. I use 3% of my brain? Yes, don't worry about it. Everybody on Earth uses 3% of their brain. 3 to 5%. And that's why they're there. 3? 3%? 3%? You mean nobody on Earth uses more than that? When you use more than 5% of your brain, you don't want to be on Earth, believe me. And they have one of my very favorite scenes where they depict and they go to this place called the Past Lives Pavilion, where Shirley MacLaine is the host as herself. Welcome to the Past Lives Pavilion. You don't know who Shirley MacLaine is. She was a big deal back in the 70s, and she was very outspoken as an actress talking about these premises like reincarnation and having multiple lifetimes, which wasn't very popular back then. So they made fun of her. She makes this cameo playing a part as herself, where in this past life's pavilion, they're able to see a few lifetimes that they lived. Thank you. And when they were on Earth...
And it's just, it's hilarious. I love it. What I really especially love about this movie is how it shows that the whole premise is to overcome fear. And I really truly believe that when we come here to have our earthly incarnation, we are here to act in love. We are here to have these experiences and not be fearful. And my channel is really about empowerment and it's helping you to overcome any of the fears that you have right now. The fears about dying, the fears about death. And we talk about a lot of these tenants and I interview a lot of people and they share their perspectives so that you can become more empowered. So I really highly, highly recommend this movie. Check it out. It's fun. It's funny. And it's just a great lesson about overcoming fear. You can find it on Amazon Prime for free. And right here, I'm going to share an honorable mention with you, which is my childhood favorite movie, The Wizard of Oz. I'm going to go out on a limb and guess that there's probably not a single one of you who have not seen this movie, The Wizard of Oz, but I challenge you to watch it again with this unique perspective, and that is it should have been named Dorothy has an NDE, Dorothy has a near-death experience. Think about the premise of the movie. She's living in this black and white, dull, earthly experience. She gets hit on the head. She dies. She goes to the other side where this magically colorful, beautiful realm exists with these giant poppy flowers and the yellow brick road and the emerald city and all of these magical talking trees. And then Dorothy encounters these spirit guides in the form of the scarecrow and the tin man and the cowardly lion, encouraging her to connect to her inner wisdom, encouraging her to live from her heart, encouraging her to let go of her fears through the courage. This is just such a great example with the wicked witch being fear, which she ultimately gets rid of right on her journey. And then Glenda the Good Witch is actually Dorothy's higher self, guiding her, helping her to overcome these fears, and ultimately letting her realize that the power has al always existed from within as she clicks her feet together and is able to take herself back home. I also love the wizard in this movie. I had somebody recently who had a near-death experience talk about how he thinks the wizard represents like that fear, the fire and brimstone. I feel like it's a little bit more of looking behind the curtain and realizing that everything is an illusion and that this is um, a fake existence. So it's just a really fun movie for you to watch from a different spiritual perspective. So I really hope that you have enjoyed this trip down my top 10 spiritual movies with all these tenants. These movies, I think, are meant to be used for empowerment. And I am here as your guide and reminder to help you remember that you are a powerful soul. And I would love to hear from you. Do you have a movie that woke you up? Do you have a movie that you'd love to share with us that you think has a spiritual tenant? Please put them down in the comments so that we can all enjoy these movies and learn and grow with each other because that is the whole purpose. Thank you so much for joining me today. And I really hope that these movies are a great outlet for you to um, look at in a different perspective.